So I feel like we should cover some topics about um, mechanics of the game and styles of the game because some players, like newer players, don't know, hey, what order of attack should I go with? Is it better to do this or to do this, guarding and so forth? So I'm going to cover a few things like that. We'll start with the order of attack. So what do you feel is the best order of attack if you have just three units, your vanguard and two rearguards? If we're counting out all effects from the front, from anything that's in the, on the field right now, mm -hmm. most people are excited to hit that drive check because those, especially at grade three, mm -hmm. having twin drive changes everything. It can make your attack suddenly hit. So I know a lot of people go with the vanguard first. Mm -hmm. That's lost me many games. <laughs> yeah, most of the time, going vanguard first is never the best way to go. Because, I mean, yes, it, it, it's a safe route because you can always just throw your triggers on the rear guard. But most of the time, you want to power scale because there's not a, there's not a guarantee that you're going to rip a trigger. And then what happens when your opponent rips a defensive trigger? Now your rear guards that you were going to swing with probably can't attack. But if you were to swing with them first, they had an opportunity, and then you have an opportunity with the vanguard to swing the drive check. So my opinion is if you go rear, rear guard, vanguard, rear guard, that's the better way because it gives you a good balance of when the swings. Now, there is, you know, uh, exceptions to this. And exceptions would be in premium if you're running stand triggers. Yeah. Stand triggers, at that point, you definitely go rear guards first <laughs> because your vanguard can stand, stand triggers and stand at rear guards. Um, if you have a restanding vanguard, then at that point, I would go vanguard first. If it, this is entirely like Dragon Empire right now wants to swing with Vanguard first because you're going to power up overdrive. Units. Yes. So that's another exception. But for for the most part, when I build a field, I go left to right with left being my weakest, mm -hmm. then Vanguard, then right being my highest rear guard row. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people that play Vanguard Zero already know about this, but power scaling helps a lot because the, you, you can't always bank on your opponent never hitting a defensive trigger. There's always the possibility of your opponent hitting a defensive trigger Mm, excuse me. And because of that, you know, you got to think, well, will this hit? Well, I mean, th that's the best way to put it is, is this going to hit if they hit a defensive trigger? If no, okay, then I should probably swing with this first. That's, that's something I've been picking back up, as, especially with overdress. I've, I've learned the over trigger mm -hmm. will ruin turns. And that's another weird one because now that we have over triggers in the, in the game, if you know you're only going to have three attacks... That's where things get a little wonky because people are probably going to be banking on, hey, you know, there's still a possible, there's a good opportunity for me to hit the over trigger. It's still in the deck. Well, what if I swing with Vanguard first because then I can just give the two rear guards 100 million and they can hit no matter what as long as they don't have a perfect guard. So there gives that. And then if you go to the rear guard, Vanguard, rear guard, Sinchik, and you drive check it, well, cool. You, van you can't give, you know, the other rear guard 100 million. So you're just going to give it to the Vanguard and it's already swinging. So if it got PG, then it was just a waste of the power. And then the other 100 million, we're talking about the Star Tech over trigger, by the way, not the other ones, because we have no idea what the other ones might bring. But just that alone, it's like, okay, well, I just wasted the effect because it's already got PG'd and there's only one rear guard that can get the 100 million. It's, it's definitely a waste. Um, but I was actually thinking about it as a guarding card mm -hmm. in hand because it is effectively a PG unless they hit their over trigger when you block with it. Having that much shield value is enough to stop. I don't know. A lot. You say that, but let's say you're going against Dragon Empire, right? They overdress, they swing with Vanguard, they hit their over trigger. You're dead. And they restand, and they do the effect again. So there's already 20 on top of the plus 10, and then they're already a base of 10. So there's already 40, not including any triggers or other effects that are boosting it. They might get over that over trigger. They might, and then you have to consider, in that case, they're also getting two more drive checks. You're, you're blocking for a lot of potential more than you're blocking for the solid numbers, mm -hmm. which is where a lot of in entering players have trouble. They're not just blocking for the immediate number. Mm. That's a good segue, though, to our other topic, uh, knowing when to guard. I feel like this is a really, really big topic that a lot of newer players miss a lot and don't know or are not experienced with, is knowing when to take a hit and when not to take a hit. Because early in the game, it's obvious, you know, you can take some hits. But there's a point where you want to say stop, and there's a point when you want to say, okay, I want some more damage because I need resources. So throwing it to you, when would you say is a good time to guard and a good time not to guard? 
I I personally very rarely guard on on the first a, first attack. The only time I've ever done it is when someone tried to board rush me, mm. um, <laughs> and I'll still take two damage from it because there's no point not to. Mm-hmm. Um, I do find that if you eat too much damage in the early game, you are much more pressured late game because you're never going to have the hand size needed to block. Mm-hmm. So I, I usually find I do my best when I'm taking at least one damage every turn. It gives me the chance for something to block with on a trigger, but I'm not relying on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm also blocking... I usually find myself blocking the, lo- the lowest number because it's the easiest to block. I recognize it's not always the best move. <laughs> there's no, in my opinion, there's no easy way to gauge. Like, there's not like a safety rule. Like, I, I personally have like a a rule of putting never put myself past three damage before they get the grade three, because they could easily just say double crit you right then and you're done, if they do that. So I always try to leave myself two, three at max damage before I get the grade three. Um. Depending on the deck I'm doing, though, if if it's not very counterblast intensive, like uh, Stoic K is a good option. Yeah. Stoic K has very only neat thing it really needs to counterblast is the Vanguard. You can have other skills in the rearguard, but they're optional. But you always want to have yourself at least one counterblast. So before you get to grade three, you can leave yourself at two, and that guarantees you three, at least two of Magnolia skills. But you really don't want to put yourself too high because say you're going against like uh, Dark States, and you put yourself at three. And they decide to final rush you. And then you're looking out five attacks. And depending on your situation, you may or may not have the, the hand to guard all of it. Especially if they uh, Persona Ride. Yeah, Persona Ride definitely definitely changes. It actually has changed when I choose to guard in a turn, when they Persona Ride too. But I feel like... I If you're going to guard, though, especially in the late game. Late game, this is, this, I feel like this is like key. Always guard small attacks because you're going to use less resources from your hand if you were to go, say, this little guy here swinging for, I'm a 13k vanguard, is swinging for uh, 14. Okay, so I could let that hit, but what happens when the other attacks are bigger and I don't have the shield? Always guard what you can, but at the same time, don't overguard. Don't leave yourself defenseless on the next turn, if that makes sense. Unless it's absolutely dire and you're at five damage at that point. You're like, oh, yeah, I know I'm going to die right here. I should probably guard everything. <laughs> yep. I, I find new players. I, I have friends who are slowly getting into Vanguard, mm-hmm. so that's, that's a lot of fun playing with them. But I find them trying to block every attack, which isn't – it's not smart. And that, that's the one thing I notice about uh, new players that pick up the game, like straight out of the gate – they have the tendency to feel like guarding everything, like they're gonna die if they have don't if they take damage. So they have the mentality of guarding everything. No, no, no. Counterblast is a resource in the game, and it is okay to take some damage. Just don't take a lot. Don't know know when to, when to stop. I feel like being at two damage before grade three is a good start, and taking only one damage past that every turn is a good start after that because it gives you wiggle room. Unless you need uh, more effects that require counterblast intent, intense. It also gives you the chance to recover from if your opponent happens to double crit, especially on their first grade three. They just gave you two more counterblasts is all they really did. They didn't push you for, for the game. Exactly. Also, keep in mind that your certain decks also really won't counterblast. Uh, Keter Sanctuary's Order is a good example. Um, if you have it in hand... It's a good idea to leave yourself at least two open CB when it comes to your turn. Because it's probably going to plus you at least one card in your hand because it replaces itself and draws you a card. And it gives a unit plus five. So it gives you resources to work with. So, it, you know, it can return it, it can turn into a unit or a shield. And the card you draw can also turn into a unit or a shield. It don't have to beat the order, which is a dead card in your hand. So at that point, you want to give yourself at least two CB. So there are moments where you're like, okay, then I need to take the damage. So, again, it kind of weighs on your deck. But on an average rule, I feel like don't guard immediately in the game. It's okay to say, I'm going to take a hit. Unless your opponent's like grade one rushing you. But then at that point, your dynamic changes a bit. You, you, could, you could take some of this damage and you can guard some of it. At that point, I would just say, go to the same mentality you would if you were at a grade three. You know, throw down, your, throw down the, the pokes guard them easy, and then take the Vanguard because they're going to probably drive track a crit 
But if you guard the rest of the rear guards, they're they're throwing in a whole board. Like, cool, well, you only took two damage from all this. They have no hand. Now you can just push back harder in the follow-up. I find your two damage is good. I find that counterblast heavy decks will want to stop at three before your opponent hits grade three because you're trying to buy yourself turns at that point. Mm-hmm. 